Hello, my name is Hannah Hurdle, and I'm the Library and Learning Specialist at Oklahoma Library here at UA Little Rock. And in this video, I'm going to be going over the Open Educational Resource Project Gutenberg, which is a free OER textbook database for faculty and students. Project Gutenberg was founded by Michael Hart, who first invented ebooks in 1971. Hart created Project Gutenberg with the mission to encourage the creation and distribution of ebooks. In fact, Project Gutenberg was the first provider of free electronic books. In line with its mission, Project Gutenberg aims to provide as many ebooks in as many formats and languages as possible for the entire world to read. Because of this, everyone is welcome to contribute to Project Gutenberg. Now, I'm going to take you through the OER textbook database, Project Gutenberg, so you can see how to navigate it, view the type of content found there, as well as what resources are available to assist student learning. So let me share my screen. So here is Project Gutenberg, which you can find just going, about going to gutenberg.com or typing Project Gutenberg into Google. So here on the home screen, you can see some of the most um, recent books uploaded to Project Gutenberg. If we scroll down, you have different ways that you can search Project Gutenberg. So you can search um, and browse. So this can be by title, author, subject, etc. So you can just do a little quick search. You can do an advanced search, which like a lot of library databases has different filters or limiters that can use. So you can search by title, author, subject, etc. You have different browsing options. So you can browse by author, title, special categories, etc. And then there's also the full text search option. So you can search in Yahoo, Google, or DuckDuckGo. So I'm going to do a search for my favorite book, Little Women, just to show you what it looks like. So here it shows me that I have 25 results displayed. So they have Little Women. Um, they have some other works by Louisa May Alcott, um, Louisa May Alcott, Her Life Letters and Journals, A Girl in for Girls by Louisa May Alcott, but they also have some of what Project Gutenberg would consider related titles. So we have A Little Journey by Ray Bradbury, The Irish Fairy Book, um, so things, just different things that are related. So I'm going to go to the book, and you can see how many times how many times this specific book has been downloaded. So I can read this as an HTML file, an EPUB file, a Kindle, plain text, etc. And it shows like how some of these can be downloaded, so Google Drive, things like that. Um, I have some metadata, so it tells me like if there's been any um, updates given to this book because some of the books do have updates depending on if there's some kind of like error or anything, grammatical issues, things like that. I have when the release date was, the copyright status, so this is in the public domain, and everything in um, Project Gutenberg is free to use. So I'll just click on the HTML. So chapter and so students can just read it like any other ebook on their computer or if they want to be able to you know edit it they could do an epub or a kindle file so let's go back they also have project Gutenberg also has audiobooks so let's go down to something so they can just listen to it chapter 11 right from their computer it's broken down into chapters, so that makes them accessible because they could have the text or the audio version of the book. Not all the books have that, but a lot of them do. Scroll back up. So that's just a simple search. You can search by their most popular books, so it just pulls up things that are downloaded the most. So you have Pride and Prejudice, Moby Dick. Dracula, Tells Two Cities, things like that. But they have more than just fiction books. You can look at their latest releases. So these are things that have just been uploaded to Project Gutenberg. So we have Robot Nemesis by E.E. E. Smith. Um, the 
putting in pastry book Elizabeth Douglas. So to the so the Tomorrow by Irving E. Cox. So there's a bunch of different authors um, that are constantly being their works are being added to Project Gutenberg. You could also just do a random search if you don't know what you're looking for. And so it's going to give you um, this is a mix of their fiction and nonfiction. So let's go back. You can also browse by their bookshelves. So they have it broken down into different bookshelves. So they have animal, you can look at their education bookshelf, fiction, history, music, religion, science. Like I said, it's not just fiction books. Let's go to psychology and philosophy. This is broken down even further. So now we have a bunch of their psychology textbooks. And this is, um, not all of them, these are just the main ones that they're showing, so sort of a popularity. So you can change it by title, author, release date. So you have different options. Let's go back. You can look at the books that are downloaded the most, the authors who are downloaded the most. So this again, this would be based on popularity. You can see what was most recently added to the collection. So it's a pretty easy site to navigate and to find um, either specific things that you're looking for or to just get recommendations from Project Gutenberg. You can view their frequently asked questions page. So um, like who runs it? Uh, do they publish only books? So just things that what languages, how do they choose to publish, things like that. And also, so there's, you can also search up here from book search, book chart, bookshelves, and I frequently download it, and it's, it looks the same. If you go to their about page, you can get more information about Project Gutenberg. If you go to permissions and licenses, this can talk about copyright, terms of use, things like that which everything on the site is free to use. So one more thing I wanna show you is if you visit selfgutenberg.org, this um, is where they house all their contemporary books and poetry books. So this is um, newer works. So they have um, their daily picks, adventure, biographies, children's literature, education, fantasy. So they have a much wider collection here and it's newer content. Let's go to biographies. I'll just, let's go to, let's go to, let's do children's literature. So some of these are, these are all self-published works that Project Gutenberg has promoted. So here you have a coloring book for children. So it's, um, These are more uh, options for you to, uh, for books to add to your courses. It has a wider range than Project Gutenberg does. So let me stop sharing. So Project Gutenberg truly has so much to offer faculty, students, and course instruction. Not only does it promote the use of open educational resources and textbooks, but it also provides students with an alternate way to access course information in a cheaper and more accessible way. If you would like more assistance with finding textbooks on Project Gutenberg for your courses, or would like more information on locating open educational resources for your courses in general, please reach out to me at hfhurl at ualr.edu or one of the other librarians in student success at Ottenheimer Library. I hope you find this video helpful. Thank you.